Hey neighbor, Alicia Dolan here at Creating in My Corner. I have another um, card hey making neighbor, video for you here. tonight. And it actually combines a couple different stamp sets and uh, some dies. So I hope that you are excited about this card. Um, it actually took me a long time to design this. I, it, it took me all afternoon. I had an idea of what I wanted and I had seen something somewhere that I wanted to case. Um, if you don't know what case is, that's copy and share everything. So I wanted to take this card and make it my own, but I couldn't find the, I couldn't find where I found it. So I'm just going off my memory and hopefully um, it didn't turn out exactly the way that I thought it would, but that's how things go, right? So I hope that you'll enjoy our card tonight and hopefully you can stamp along with me. If you would like to, and you have some stamping supplies at home, uh, this is the card that we're gonna make. I think you can see that my video is a little bit delayed, so I'm trying to show you and you may not be able to see it. Okay, yeah, it looks like my lighting's not good. So I'll show it to you when I turn my camera down. But I'm using the Seaside Seashells die, the, sea, the Seashells uh, embossing folder. Friends are like Seashells stamp set, the framed and festive stamp set, and the framed florets dies. So if you don't know the framed and festive and the framed florets dies, are just out. So they're um, they're new. If you don't have them yet, don't worry. But you might want to get them because they're really cool. I'm going to turn the camera around and we'll get started. Give me just a moment. All right, hopefully you can see my workspace. Oh, it looks like I might need to move things around just a little bit. Okay, here is our card for tonight. I know that you could not see it before. Well, at least I assume you couldn't because I couldn't see it. So hopefully now that issue is fixed. If you are watching and you comment and let me know um, that you can see the video or that you can see the card, then that helps me out too. And if you're watching later on YouTube, you're in luck because uh, I record this live on Facebook. And then when I send it over to YouTube, I try to cut out those little beginning parts that don't go, that don't go quite so well. All right, so to make our card tonight, we're gonna use a couple different techniques. So this is what I came up with. I wanted a card where it could be Christmassy and remind you of the seaside at the same time. So that's why I combined two different stamp sets. I didn't have a stamp set that was both uh, shells and Christmas. So we're gonna start with some Sahara sand cardstock, and this is gonna be our base. So you're gonna cut this five and a half by eight and a half. So it's five and a half this way and eight and a half down the side. And that's scored right here at four and a quarter. So we can just fold this in half. And then I'm gonna use a bone folder to press one side 
And I like to make that the back side because sometimes when I'm pressing, I leave a little mark. And then the front side will be, should be just fine. And I have another piece of Sahara sand here. And this one I'm going to cut to five and a quarter by four. And that's the size I would generally put on the front of a card. It gives you a little bit of an edge around. So there's four and then five. And this is already cut at five and a quarter. It must be the other half of the piece I used earlier. So that's going to be our next layer. Actually, it's not. It's a, it's a top layer. And then this piece of basic white is three and three quarters by five. And this is the one we're going to stamp on first. And I have taken out my stamps and already put them on blocks. So from the Friends Are Like Seashells stamp set, we are using this shell here, this little shell here, this kind of long skinny one, this little branch, and these, I say branch, that's probably more like a plant, like a little greeny plant. And then this, that looks more like seaweed to me. Okay. So we can set those aside and I have them all on little blocks already. So the small one is on block A. The kind of long skinnier one is on block C. The one I have put one of the little branches on block D. I really could have used a smaller block for that, but I didn't have any. And I wanted to just leave them on their blocks. And then this little starfish is on block B. And these two, um, this one is a little bit bigger shell. And this one is that seaweed. These are on paper pumpkin blocks. And I'm gonna give you a couple tips when we're stamping with those about how, um, how to use them and not get ink all over the place because these, uh, paper pumpkin blocks are a little bit skinnier than what a regular Stampin' Up block is. A regular block is uh, at least twice as thick and has a dent in it for, um, for your fingers to go in. So you're less likely to ink them up while you're stamping. But these are nice too. They, they travel well. They're lighter than the regular ones. I'll give you some tips about how we're going to use those. Okay, so we need two colors of ink tonight and our Versamark stamp pad. But we're going to start with Sahara Sand. And to open these, you just pull the ends, flip them, and then slide it together. And I'm going to leave that one up here at the top. Hopefully I'll remember that. And this one is mint macaron. And I'm gonna set that one to the side as well. And try not to ink up my hand. Okay, and so we're gonna take this, uh, this stamp first. This is that long skinny shell. And we're gonna put that right in our Sahara sand. And when you're stamping with these, you wanna just tap, tap, tap all around on that ink. You do not want to take your stamp and press it into the ink because then you're going to get ink everywhere. Okay, so just tap, tap, tap. And we're going to put this one this way, right in the middle of where we want to stamp. And I need to measure. I can't tell you how many times today I stamped and re-stamp trying to figure this out. Okay, so we're gonna put our block down and press in the center. And there we have our stamped image. And I'm gonna stamp my ink off a little bit just because I'm not gonna clean it right away. And I don't want the extra ink just hanging out there. Now, uh, for this next part, I've got two little post-it notes here that were in my uh, 
over here beside me. And this is, these are gonna come in really handy, okay? So first, we're gonna put it along this side here of our seashell. And we're gonna take this little, um, this one looks more like fern leaves to me, the one with lots of little leaves on it. And we're gonna dip that in our mint macaron. We're gonna tap it, tap, 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 tap. It's a lot of tapping, okay? <laughs> and people make fun of me, but tapping really works. Okay, and then we're gonna stamp off on our scrap piece. I huffed on it a little bit. And then I'm just gonna put the very bottom of that next to my shell here. Okay, see how that little tiny bit sits there? Okay, and then I'm going to stamp that off a little bit. And then I'm going to take this, um, these long leaves, and I'm going to do the same thing. But when I ink up this stamp, because it's a paper pumpkin block, I'm going to try and keep my hands uh, off of the ink. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So when I tap my stamp, See how my fingers are off the edge here? I'm going to tap around, but I'm going to keep my fingers so that they're far away from the ink. My image is still in the center of my block, but I'm going to hold it so that my corners are off the edges. In that way, I won't get as much of it all over my, all over my hands, hopefully. And I'm going to do the same thing where I stamp off. You're going to set it down gently and then press in the center. And then I'm huffing on it just a little bit. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to move our post-it note just to here so that it's over the edge of that. You don't want it to be all the way over the edge of your image, but you want it to be kind of close. All right. And then we're going to set it down, press in the center, and lift it up. And then we've got our images so far, they look like they're coming out from behind our seashell. I can't see if anyone's commenting tonight. So if you are, and I'm missing it, I am sorry, I don't know. I don't know where your comments are. I don't see any comments yet, but I'm really glad you're here. Okay, next, we're gonna turn our post-it note around because we're gonna start stamping a little bit here on the other side. And so I'm just trying to line up my edge a little bit with that so that I don't stamp over it. All right, and now I'm gonna go back to my uh, leaf image with all the little tiny leaves and I'm going to stamp that but this time I'm going to stamp it right um, like it is so I'm not going to stamp off I'm just stamping full strings right next to there and then I'm going to move my, move my post-it note again. And this time I need a second post-it note because I don't, I don't want to stamp on top of anything that I've got already going. Okay. And I'm going to take the small shell and I'm going to stamp in my Sahara sand and I'm going to stamp off. And then I'm going to huff on my stamp. And I'm going to stamp. No, I forgot where I'm going. Hopefully I'm in the right place. I'm going to stamp right here. Because remember, I'm trying to make that tree shape image. All right, let's see how that turned out. All right, it's really pale, but it's there. See it right here, just a little bit. I probably could have got it a little bit closer to those 
um, images right there. In fact, I think I used a different color earlier. Let me grab one more color. And let's stamp it. Look, we're going to stamp it again in soft suede, but we're going to stamp off a little bit. Okay, so now I need to get my post it notes back where they were. Let's see. Think right about there. And then this one will go right here. All right, and this time I need to clean my stamp off first because I'm switching colors. All right, and so I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap over here in the soft suede. It's, here, I can bring it over here where you guys can see it a little bit. Tap, tap, tap. I'm going to stamp off because this color I know is a bit darker. And I'm going to stamp that down and then press in the center. You always want to just lay your stamp down and then press in the center. Okay. So that you can see that a little more clearly than you could before. All right. And so now. <clears throat> we're going to switch over to the other side. And I'm just going to cover up a bit of those green leaves. And this little leaf right here. And this time I'm going to grab that larger shell. And I am, I'm going to use the soft suede again. So that one is right here. So we did actually switch and we're using three colors instead of two. We've got soft suede, Sahara sand, and mint macaron. Okay, and we're going to stamp off, huff on our stamp, and then I'm going to stamp right over here. And I'm just going to press in the center, just like that. Okay, so, so far, We've got an image of a shell over here and one over here and the little branches coming out behind. Now we want to put a shell up here. So we'll turn our little post-it note this way. And let's see, I'm going to stamp. Am I going to stamp over that? I think I am a little bit but I'll put this right, right here. Okay, I'm gonna use that same little bit larger shell. I'm gonna clean it off. This time I'm gonna use the Sahara sand and I'm gonna tap. Now again, because I'm using the paper pumpkin block, I really wanna try and keep my fingers off my ink pad. And we're gonna stamp that right up here. And we're gonna lay it down and press in the center. I think I'm getting my, um, my image is a little too far, a little too far. Okay, and then I need, I need a little bit something more on this side. So I'm going to cover up this shell just like that. And I'm going to grab one of my leaf stamps. I think this one with the lots of little leaves and I'm going to get some more of that mint macaron. And just tap around. And then I'll come over here and stamp it. I'm going to stamp it directly on this time so it'll give us a little bit of a different color since we stamped off the first time. Okay, let's see. Each time I kind of want to pull it up and check and see how we're how we're doing as far as our pattern goes. Okay, and I'm thinking that looks pretty good. 
And I'm going to cover this up right here and grab my other post-it note. Oh, let's see, which way should I go? I'm going to cut this post-it note in half. Because I can see two spots I'd like to cover up. All right. And the first one is this way. I wonder if I should cut it around a little bit, but let's try and get away with it with that one. Okay, and I'm gonna cover this part up. And then I'm gonna take that larger seashell again that I used earlier. And the first time we did Sahara sand. So this time let's do a little bit of soft suede and we'll stamp it off. I'm gonna clean it first because I can't remember exactly. I'm pretty sure it was um, Sahara sand that I stamped in the first time, but I don't want to take any chances. All right, so we're gonna tap in our soft suede. We're just gonna tap, tap, tap. And then we're gonna stamp off, huff on our stamp. And when I say huff on our stamp, that just means um, we're gonna breathe on it, like you would breathe on your glasses to clean them. And we're gonna stamp that right in the center. Well, that didn't go very well. Hold on, because I have so many layers of post-it note right there. It's a little bit hard to get that center. All right, I'm just gonna take and tap it a little bit. All right, let's see how it looks. Yeah, it's not, it's not exactly what I hope. So what I am gonna do, what I can do is I'm gonna put that post-it note, the rounded one back on there for a second. And I'm gonna take my um, long leaf stamp and I'm gonna, oh, and see, I just did what I told you guys not to do. I just got my fingers right in my mint macaron ink. So I'm gonna wipe those off real quick. And try again. I'm gonna hold my fingers off to the side this time while I'm inking up my stamp. I'm gonna stamp off and then I'm just gonna stamp some little green. I'm gonna have to do it a couple times. Some little green leaves coming up so that it kind of covers up that little mistake I made there with the not putting it quite in the right spot. There we go. And maybe I'll do some of the other ones too. These little leaves will really cover up a lot. And I'll stamp off, off, and then I'll get them to go right along that, right along that edge, just like that. And I think that's pretty good. Oh, and I got some ink over there. But that's okay, we're gonna cover that up. All right, so let's set these off to the side. And we've got this. Oh, and actually on my first one, I see that I added some more little branches up at the top. So let's do that real quick. So let me get that post-it note back. And I'm just gonna set it along that edge. And then over here, so I don't get that one. And I'll take my little green leaves and I'm going to stamp them off. And then they can just go here. 
and I'll add a few more. Okay, and then I'm gonna get my other leaves. And I'm gonna remember this time to hold my block on the edges. I'm gonna stamp off and then get some of those long flat leaves in there. There we go. <clears throat> All right, let's see how that turned out. Okay, so that is how you use post-it notes as a mask. And I'm gonna close up these inks and we will move on with our card. Okay, now next, this is, this is just for um, one part of our card. So that's gonna go behind here like this. Okay, so next, this piece of Sahara sand, we are gonna emboss with the um, Seashells 3D embossing folder. And when I emboss, I use a big shot. And I'll move that right over here so you guys can see. You can use a stamp and cut an emboss machine. I don't have one of those yet, so I'm still using the Big Shot. I've had this for, um, I don't know how long, probably at least 10 years. So I've had it a really long time. And each machine is a little bit different. So mine has a cutting, cutting and embossing surface like this. They're all a little bit different. What I have to do for my sandwich is use this piece of silicone rubber and a uh, textures embossing plate. And then I take my piece of Sahara sand cardstock and a tiny mister bottle. And I just missed it with a little bit of water. I always spray it twice. I don't usually spray it so close to everything else, but I wanted you to be able to see that. And then I run it through the embossing machine. So you always wanna turn it so that the fold goes through first. And if you ever get uh, a time where your folder doesn't wanna go through your embossing machine, it probably means that your sandwich is not quite right. So you don't ever want to force it through because you can break those embossing folders right in half. So then we just turn the handle to get it through. And when you take it out, this is what you get. So if I hadn't sprayed it with water, my um, embossed image probably wouldn't be quite as sharp. I found that the water softens it just enough that um, it gives me a better image. Yeah, Lori, if I if I don't emboss it first, I can I can actually do another one and I'll show you the difference between the two. Give me just a second. I thought I had some little pieces cut off to the side, but I can show you the difference if I don't emboss it. I mean, if I don't miss it. So I'm just cutting another piece that's five and a quarter by four. 
and it's the same color. So hopefully you'll be able to see what the difference is. Now I do have to let it dry for a second before I put it on my card, but it really doesn't take very long at all. I didn't add a lot of water, just a little bit. All right, so this time we'll run it through without adding the water and I'll show you what the difference is. Hopefully you'll be able to see on camera. I didn't move everything and it's kind of scooting all my stuff around. Okay, so here is the next one. I think you can definitely tell the difference. Okay, so this one is the one that I used the mist on. And this one is the one that I didn't. I think you can tell that the image on the left is a little bit sharper than the image on the right. And that's what I found makes the biggest difference for me is just misting the paper. So if you find that when you're embossing, your image isn't quite as, um, it doesn't stand out as much as you'd like it to, then try misting it just a little bit with the water. Oh, good. I'm glad you can see it in the video because I can't always tell. And sometimes I watch it later. And I'm like, oh, I said that, but <laughs> I might not be right. Okay. So here's the one that we embossed. We're actually gonna, we're gonna need that machine again in a second here. But one thing at a time, right? Okay, so here is our image. Here is our stamped image that's gonna go behind, behind it. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to cut out that oval shape. So back we go to our big shot one more time. And this time, we're going to need our uh, cutting plates. So as you can see, I, this plate I've had for a really long time. It doesn't even have the Stampin' Up! logo on it anymore but I always use the same plate on the bottom to cut on until it gets so old that I can't use it anymore or it cracks. Like you can see right here that it's starting to crack a little bit. And what I've learned recently is if when you look at your plate is bowed a little bit like this, then you need to put that hill up. Okay, so that's up. And then with my top plate, the same thing. So the hill goes up. Now these, I have to tell you, these little words in this number will sometimes come off on your paper. So I try to flip this one only when I have something that's in the center, not under those, those areas. So if I'm embossing, not embossing doesn't matter, but if you're cutting, that's when it matters. So we're gonna take our embossed piece and then I'm using the framed florets dies. And we're gonna use this one here that looks like an oval. Well, it is an oval. It doesn't just look like it, it actually is. And we're gonna place it down where our stamped image would be. And I'm just gonna double check that real quick if I can find my stamped image and make sure that I feel like it's gonna be in the right spot. And I do. Okay, so then we're gonna put our top plate on and I like to lay it on there and then kind of squeeze them together while I push it in until that handle turns. And then you can crank it right through. If you don't squeeze them together, I find that sometimes my paper will scoot around inside there and then I won't get, um, I won't get exactly the cut that I want to get. And uh, so I try to avoid that. All right, so when we pick it up, we've got our oval shape here. We have a separate frame. And we have an oval piece that we can use for something else later. 
But what we really want this time is this oval shape. Okay, so let's sit that over here with our card pieces. And I'm gonna move this out of the way. We're gonna need it one more time, but not right this second. And I'm gonna put this little frame away before I lose it. All right, and this goes over here. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little more stamping. And I have a little piece of white here that I stamped a bunch of things on earlier. So I'm just gonna use that for my stamping. I It took me forever to figure out the um, how my shells should go so that they would look kind of like a tree. All right, and now we're gonna do our embossing. So here is my Versamark ink. This is the Noel from the Framed and Festive stamp set. So I really like this stamp set. And I thought that the sentiments were, they're perfect for Christmas. And what I'm trying to make is a Christmas card, right? A Christmas seashells card. So here we go. And we have the starfish from the Friends Are Like Seashells. So when you are stamping with Versamark, um, it can be a little tricky. You want to tap the same way that you would with your other ink, but Versamark is a little bit sticky. And so, and you definitely don't want to press hard. So you just want to do lots of little taps. And then when you're ready, when you feel like your stamp is covered in Versamark, you're going to set it down and then press in the center, but you're really not going to press hard. You want firm pressure, but not hard pressure. Because if you press hard, all your ink is going to um, smear around. All right, so I'm going to cover that up and we're going to emboss this. So I have right here a little piece of printer paper and I'm just going to set this over the top. Oh, there's a little piece of dog hair in there. Get out of here. And I'm going to sprinkle the, this is silver embossing powder. I'm just gonna sprinkle that over the top. And then I like to try and dump it off right back into the container. And I always flick it a couple times just to be sure. And we're gonna do this twice. So I'm just gonna set this to the side. Okay. And I think my embossing gun will reach just about this far. Okay, so I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but I'm gonna to try to let you see the magic happen here. So as I turn it on, and you wanna keep it moving all the time, you'll see that start to get really shiny. And when the whole thing is shiny and catches the light, that's how you know it's done. Okay, and so now we are gonna cut this out. I gotta figure out a better way to show you how to use the big shot or I'm just going to have to leave it on the side. Okay, so we're going to set it like this. And from our seashells dies, I do want to show you this because it's this one is really cool too. Okay, see how cool those are. But we're just going to grab this little starfish and line it up on here. And one of these little starfish has a bend 
in its arm. Its arm doesn't go straight out. It kind of curves a little bit. So that's how I know how to line it up. All right, and then we're gonna lay our plate over the top, just like before. And we're gonna wind it through. Okay. And then we have our little starfish for the trap of our seashell tree. Okay, so I'm gonna stack that up with my other card pieces. I'm gonna put this little starfish away because I don't wanna lose it and scoop it back to the side. Okay, and now I have one more, one more piece to stamp. And emboss. So I'm going to stamp my Noel. Now this is a red rubber stamp. So I don't necessarily need my um, my stamp and pierce mat, but I'm going to use it anyway, just because uh, be, just because I have it here, and I feel like I might as well. So I'm just going to lay my Noel down, and I'm going to press in the center. And then I need to grab my printer paper again. And I have to tell you, I did forget to use my embossing buddy this time, but I did use it on the first card I made. Sometimes I forget. Uh, the embossing buddy is just this little, um, it's this little pouch and you can still get it. It comes with, uh, it comes within a tray an embossing tray and it comes with these really cool tweezers. So I think it's called the embossing kit, but I'm not 100% sure about that. But it does help your embossing powder not to stick where you don't want it to. And the tweezers are, they're really great tweezers. So I'm just not using the tray because I've switched out colors a lot of times today. And I like to, as much as I can, dump them back into the same container. And so if I use a piece of printer paper, then I don't have to clean out my tray in between, in between every time. Now I do put it, I do put my printer paper over top of my, embossing tray when I dump it back into the little container though, because it'll catch all that. This little embossing powder gets everywhere and it makes such a mess. Okay, oh, I almost dumped it and made a huge mess. Right there. Okay, so here's this. We're gonna emboss this. So here's my heat tool. Now, sometimes if my piece starts to curve a little bit, I'll turn it over and warm up the opposite side. That usually helps flatten it back out. Okay, so there is that. And now we're gonna cut this snow L out and then we can put together our card. And here's a tip about uh, fussy cutting. If you don't like to fussy cut your words too much, you can use a pencil and trace around them before you start. Kind of just trace the outer image. So if you want it to be really close, you can trace up closer to your words. 
but I don't want it to be too close. So I just kind of make a line around the edge. And then I know before I start cutting kind of where I'm gonna, where I'm gonna go. And that usually helps me to cut my image out a little bit neater. And you always wanna try and keep your scissors pointing up as you cut. Instead of turning your scissors, you should be turning your paper. And I do usually try to move my scissors so that I'm cutting um, farther towards this end and not towards the point just because I feel like I have more tendency to slip when I cut towards that edge. All right, and don't worry if your pencil lines are not perfect because you can always erase them. And no one will even ever know they're there. I got a little bit, a little tiny poke out right there and I don't like that. Okay, there we go. All right, so here is our word. And here are our card pieces and we can go ahead and start putting this all together. So what I'm gonna do is glue these together first. So I'll set this off to the side. I don't need that for right now. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna turn my embossed piece over. And I'm gonna use my liquid glue to attach these together. Now, the white one is cut so that it'll be just smaller than the Sahara sand. So I'm gonna go around the edges of this one with some liquid glue. And then I'm going to go around the oval. Okay, and then I can glue them together. So I'm going to turn this over and line it up. And now I'm going to work kind of quickly. Okay, so I'm going to line it up, tap it down, and then I'm going to turn it over. And before that liquid glue dries, I'm just gonna scoot it so that it's in the center of the back. It doesn't have to be exactly in the center, but I don't want any of these white edges to stick out. That's really what I'm trying to avoid. Okay, so now we have this piece. We've got our little star and we have our no owl. And I am gonna tie this bow up here next. Now, when I tie a bow, <laughs> I still struggle with bows. So I'm gonna tie it to the best of my ability and I'm gonna try to show you how I tie a bow. All right, so I'm gonna put these little pieces over here so I don't, so I don't lose them. And then I take my ribbon and I line it up so that my spool is on the left and my short end is on the right. Now, if you think that my instructions sound a little uh, picky, it's because I really struggle with tying a bow. And so I have to do, if I don't do the same process every time, I end up with different bows. And then I take my project, whatever project I want to tie a bow on, and I turn it upside down. I put it down on the paper and I'll take this spool from the left and cross it over to the right. And then I pick up my short end and that for me goes on top. So I wrap that one around just like this. Okay. 
And then I'm gonna put my finger on that little spot where they meet. I'm gonna pull up my bow on the left, a loop, I should say, it's not a bow, it's just a loop right now. And then I take my ribbon and I wrap it around the back of that loop and then tuck it through. Okay, so now here is what I have. And it looks a little crazy right now, right? So I don't pull it all the way tight. I just pull a little bit so I can see what's going on. And then I pull the ends in. And I always try to stick my pinky fingers inside that bow before I pull it a little tighter, just because that helps me not to squash my bow. I say <laughs> squash does not sound like an official word, but it is. I'm sure it is somewhere in the world. Squash is a word. Okay. So now I can kind of wiggle my little bow pieces around before I tighten them. Okay, here we go. Wish me luck. Here we go. Tightening the bow. And I, for some reason, this one looks different than the one I tied earlier. I did it exactly the same way, you guys, exactly the same. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna move this one around. And keep in mind, I have not tightened this all the way down yet because I am worried about it going to skew. Okay, so now we're gonna pull it a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter. Okay, I don't know why this. I don't know why this one is trying to go this other way, but I'm going to try and force it back the other way. Okay, so now that's what my bow looks like. It does not look like my bow from earlier. I can tell you that, but I did it the same way. And at least I can make the ends go on the same side and the bows go on the same side. If you have excellent bow tying tips, I would love if you shared them with me because I feel like I'm always struggling to tie a bow. It'll take me a while, but if I do it, this, if you tell me how and I do it the same way every time, I will get it. At least I have to believe that I will, right? Okay, so here is our card front. We're gonna turn this over and add our Stampin' Dimensionals. And I will send out all the measurements for this card this week to everyone on my email list. So if you are on my email list, you will get a copy of the measurements. And I still have kits available from last week's online card class. Now I will, I'll go over that a little bit more at the end because I've had some questions about that and I don't wanna let them go unanswered. Uh-oh, what's going on here? Something is wrong, hold on. I think I didn't measure this card out right. Nope, I didn't. Okay, so my card was a little bit too long because my piece was not fitting on the front. Let's try that again. Now it's five and a half by eight and a half, like I told you it was in the beginning, but I was mistaken. Okay, so now, our front will sit right in the middle of that. We can take our starfish and put a Stampin' Dimensional on the back. And we're gonna put that at the top of our pretend seashell tree here. And then our Noel, we're gonna put some Stampin' Dimensionals on that. 
Actually, it probably only needs just one, but we'll put a little half one on here. Okay. I feel like I should put it down here. Yep. Okay. And that's why I did the first time. So I, I could not figure out where to put that, Noel. I tried putting it all over the front of that card but it looked the best to me down here in the corner. So there is our Stampin' Sunday card. And we used the Friends Are Like Seashells stamp set. We used the Framed and Festive stamp set, the Framed Florets, and the Seaside Seashells dies, and the Seashells 3D embossing folder. So I know that that is a lot of stuff. Um, but it's all, it's all really great. We only use three colors of ink this time and the Versamark. Thank you, Lori. And then I just wanted to tell you real quick about the class. So, um, and there will be another one next month. Hold on. All my cards are sliding away. Okay, so these are the cards from last week's Stampin' Sunday class. Now, the class is free. The instructions are free. They're already on YouTube. You can head over there and you can watch them anytime. Um, what you get with the free class is when you order $35 using the host code that I posted last week, it's still up there and it's on the YouTube video as well you get one of these packets. And inside this packet are all of the paper and embellishments that you need to make this card. So you get all the cardstock, you get the envelopes, you get the ribbon, you get the cardstock, the, the envelopes, the twine, you get this little cutout, this little cutout. Um, I will cut this little starfish for you but it wouldn't be stamped. So you have to have the stamp sets to complete these cards or something similar. Now, this one we used, we used a lot of different inks in this card class. So you'd need um, crumb cake and old olive, Sahara sand, mint macaron, balmy blue, um, pink, uh, polished pink, Calypso Coral and So Saffron. And then you need your Memento Black. Now, uh, Memento Black is something you probably already have. You probably have a black ink to stamp with. If you don't have the other colors, you can swap them out for colors that you do have. You can always order them. If you ordered the stamps and the inks, um, you would definitely qualify to get the free card class. So I just wanted to explain a little bit about how that works because um, someone asked me to order the class, but, uh, but they don't have the stamps and ink at home. So the benefit of you coming to an in-person class is that you do get to use my stamps and my ink um, and you can stamp and cut out your own pieces if you want to. I usually have everything prepared for you so that um, by the time that you leave, you go home with six beautiful cards um, that you can send right away. So they're all ready, they're ready to go. And I just wanted to let you know about that. I hope that you have a wonderful week. I'll be back next Sunday with another card. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna stick to Christmas or uh, start, start planning for the next season, but, uh, I will let you know. And if you have any requests in the meantime, let me know. Happy stamping everyone. I'll see you next Sunday.